Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature, and today I find myself in a bit of a predicament because my favorite tripod that I like to film on has decided to, well, become a bipod and have one of its legs break off, and rather than just go dig through the extensive back catalog of film that I have already lined up on the channel that has yet to be shown, I went ahead and started filming more stuff because, well, I just can't help myself, but I also really wanted to get some paint on this model and hopefully not have it languish for three months at 90% finished and you know that feeling, right? I know I do. Anyway, I saw this recent model from Creature Caster in just one of their ads online and I'm usually checking out their stuff and while some months it is something that absolutely is firing on all cylinders for me and getting all those creative ideas going. Uh, sometimes, you know, it isn't, but that's okay. This model in particular, I don't know what it was, but it really grabbed my attention. Just its intricateness and probably its massive size. And I speak none other than their recent Renegade Flesh Golem. So, first of all, we've got a logo on the base. A nice, good 4-inch, 100 millimeter size base. And you can see it's got a little bit of a, you know, ramp up there. And obviously, with a 100 millimeter base, you're going to have something pretty big. And that's what this guy is. So, this is supposed to be some kind of, you know, dark magic amalgamation, according to the background lore of it, that is going to be, you know, fighting demons or something with people gladly sacrificing themselves to be flayed alive in order to be used in the process of making these constructs. Some gruesome stuff, very uh, Soulsborne-ish in its, you know, darkness. But... I'm liking, first of all, I'm seeing these faces on those knees and getting instant flashbacks to building uh, like the Matriarch of Ecstasy in the actual resin line from Creature Caster. In fact, I, I feel that there's a lot of similar homages in its style and it's got this kind of weird, interesting, bio-organic looking armor on the legs. And you can see they're quite tall legs. Once I've got it based. Now, the right foot doesn't actually have anything to lock it in, but it's got a nice solid slot there for the left foot that's leaning on that rock. And just to give you guys a good idea, here is a typical warrior of the grim, dark, far future while we look for his counterpart, our ever-loving Inquisitor. And just for old timey's sake. You can see this is going to be a pretty big model, and I would almost argue that if you wanted to use it like just a, you know, 75 millimeter sized painting project, it could probably pass for it. And the detail is just really nice here. So obviously he's got some kind of a face mask, but again, he's got that crazy kind of bioorganic armor all over him. It's not something we see very often, and yeah, although he is supposed to be a flesh golem, you know, depending upon how you painted it, you could get away with using it as regular skin tones or something. Can I fit him on the camera? Because if I move my camera, it's absolutely going to fall over. Okay, so he's kind of hunched over like so. I'm going to get it all glued in a sec here. And then his hands are holding these big, massive, again, kind of bioorganic looking blades. And the design of the hilts and the actual swords kind of reminds me of some of the other demons that we've seen from Creature Caster over the years, which is kind of cool. But considering this guy's supposed to be hunting them and killing them, uh, I don't know, maybe he's become possessed by their power and hence the whole renegade aspect. I haven't actually looked at the RPG module because like a lot of the more interesting Patreons out there, they do have a lot of like self-contained RPG modules that use a lot of these models in them. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, obviously you do want to go check that out. Give me a sec, we'll get it glued together here. We'll see how he looks all complete. There we go. With those blades attached, I mean, he makes a pretty formidable looking opponent. 
Okay, I'm going to ever so gently try to zoom this out without knocking it over here. Much like my poor turntable that died on me that I need to replace. <laughs> and I guess I didn't glue that as well as I had hoped. But you get the idea. Overall, it's a neat looking model and I feel like, you know, if you have the right rule set for something like this, I'm thinking stuff like Forbidden Psalm, um, oh gosh, what was the, the, I cannot recall the, the skirmish version of Forbidden Psalm, the, the, the war version, um, anyway. Your usual fantasy stuff, it might make a nice proxy greater demon. I mean, it's on a big enough base. It's got enough of size going for it. I'm thinking something like, um, you know, some of Modiphius' stuff like Five Leagues on the Borderlands or Sword Weirdos. Or I'm thinking once I get my copy, because I don't have it yet, and I'm sure I'll talk about it on this channel, is uh, the new rules from Osprey. They're doomed, which is like a 40k meets Monster Hunter type deal. I think having some big baddies like this might be perfect for that kind of a system. But I also think, you know, this is going to be a real showcase type piece, which most of Creature Caster's stuff really is. And if you are a better painter than the likes of me, I think giving something like this a really stellar paint job is going to make it really pop. I mean, even on my average printer, you can really see a lot of those details popping through. And I'm not using any kind of fancy resin, so I can only imagine with what the higher resolution printers and resins are really going to give you on a model like this. I mean, you know, Creature Caster does put out some pretty showstopper models in terms of just the overall details, both their, you know, cast resin stuff, as well as most of their offerings so far. I mean, they've just barely started doing them, so I'll cut them a little slack there in terms of the 3D prints. But I've liked what I've seen so far, and honestly, if they're going to keep pushing out models like this. I know they had the Warden or whatever was like this crazy looking judge model. I don't have that one, I think. Maybe I do. I'll have to go check. Uh, it might make a nice companion piece to that. And again, it's got that kind of Baroque, um, exotic, high fantasy, dark fantasy look to it, which I particularly am a fan of. So if this is something that looks like it might strike an itch for your tabletop action, then I would say by all means, do take a look. I'm like I'm grabbing another demon model I have handy. Unfortunately, I don't have any of my creature caster stuff. I don't know where they are. I've got this Avatars of War demon here. Maybe they'll go fight it out. I've got a lot of Kingdom Death ladies hanging around on the table at the moment. Unfortunately, like he might make a good match for my Order of the Ash and Dawn guys. I don't know. He's just imposing looking. He's not even, you know, fully standing tall and yet you know he's just got considerable presence and that's something that you know i always like to see that rule of cool really is in full effect with this guy so like i said if this looks like something that might be of interest to you do take a look they've got some neat models in their actual physical catalog as well as their digital stuff so we'll put both those links down below and hopefully you guys are going to find something you like too and with that said then this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon Bye bye